Activity, doing sports and working out, and I've been doing your advice of taking the neck. General, the yeah, general, yeah. general. I've been doing that at home, then rolling my back every day. Excellent. Before you said when you take a deep breath in, you were noticing some some movement in your back. Tell me about that. Oh yeah. So when I'm sitting down or standing up, I can just inhale deeply and expand my chest, kind of. My whole back will sometimes crack in one spot or the whole spine. And it's just weird. So okay. I'm like, is that right or not? So when everything's moving perfectly, you shouldn't have that happen. And if, if something's totally frozen, you won't feel it either. It's somewhere in the middle is where that's occurring. Mm -hmm. So part of the spine can be tight, an area above or below can be overworking or moving too much and that'll make it click. So it just means that there's some imbalances in there. We go through your spine, I know we've done it before a couple times, but we'll go through again, make sure everybody's working, go over the stretching, see how you're doing. We'll do some little bit deeper adjustments, so have some fun. Let me just look at your posture again real quick here. All right, let's give me a good center here. Yeah. It's about maybe an eighth of an inch forward, otherwise it's perfect. Say, yeah, wow. it's really good. Nice. You've been doing your den roll. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and show me a range of motion. Just give me a uh, turn your head left. All right. Excellent. Turn your right. Excellent. Any pain when you do that? Just checking. No. Go ahead and look up. Any pain when you look up? All good. All right. Excellent. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then exhale. Let it go. Let it all go. There you go. Excellent. Deep breath in for Let it go. Wonderful. Oh. Deep breath in. There we go. I think we got them all that second one. Yeah. Yeah. Feel good? <laughs> yeah. Side facing me. Such a relief. Ticklish there? A little oh, yeah. sore? Ticklish. Just ticklish. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Breathe. Exhale. Deep breath in. Exhale. Go ahead and just turn your head this way a little bit if you can. Just, there you go. Deep breath in. Relax your arms. Relax your shoulders. Exhale. Very nice. Oh, that was good. <laughs> All right. I must break you. Uh, I don't know if I can. We'll try. See if, see if I can push him too much here. Get a little piece of glue. Feel that right there? Yeah. A little bump. Right there. Yeah. So this shouldn't be. This should be as smooth as glass up here. There should be no bump, no tightness. And so I don't. People go. Can, well, are you afraid of hurting him? Not really. No, he's not hurting me. <laughs> right. Feels great. Right. So the, the upper neck that's uninjured. Well, how about this? Has been injured in the past, but it's now tight. Can't be overstressed. It's already been taking a vacation. It needs to be beaten up a little bit, and its mobility restored to the way it's supposed to be. So is this because I'm leaning to one side of my neck? Can be, yeah. So even just, like I said, you tilt your head to the side, the muscles are having to work asymmetrically. Mm -hmm. Lactic acid tension build up in here, and then... It creates, you know, what do you say, microscopic tr stresses and then guarding. These are the attachments up on the occiput. You know, kind of the reason why we have these like bumps up here and ridges up here is this where the tendons attach to our skull. Mm -hmm. So the more forward our head goes, and the more even even if it's not forward when you're upright, but if your work requires you to be bent forward, then you're constantly pulling on mm -hmm. those attachments. But it's it's very good that your center isn't forward because if you if you have that coupled with your center being forward, then you never ever get a break up there. It's like an engine running hot all the time; it never turns off. There you go. 
you know, it feels, you know, there's, there's a, an effortlessness for your neck to go where it's supposed to be. It's pretty small, just that little section right there that's got some. So, so what would you call that little area, like built up? Well, I call it lactic acid. I mean, you can call it inflammation, but they're basically they're um, cellular exhaust. So when muscles, when you lift weights and your muscles start to burn, what is the burning feeling? Well, it's, it's essentially lactic acid, right? It's the yeah. exhaust that the mitochondria make when you burn energy. And so... When we have an injury, there's tightness. The tightness prevents a lot of good circulation, oxygen from getting into the tissue uh -huh. to process and um, bind to the lactic acid to make it carbon dioxide and water. And so essentially that acidity builds up in there, and that's what makes it feel a little touchy. It's like you know, something feels weird in there. It's because you got like a clump of, like like using dental ad analogies, it's like a piece of plaque. Oh, <laughs> you know, okay. it's like on the tooth. It's it's just uh, doesn't belong in there, but when you run when you brush the teeth or you run, you know, a tool over the tooth and you get get stuck on the plaque. That's what you kind of feel is that lump. Mm. Doing the stretches will, we will say, prevent a majority of the buildup, right? So the stretching uh, does two things. You're actually pushing on the area, which is pushing blood into it. Mm -hmm. And then by the curve being put into your neck, the amount of stress that the area is under is minimal. And so the actual circulation will get in there, rinse it out. You're not going to have these giant buildups that, you know, my my first visit patients have because it's like nobody's ever run the carpet cleaner. Yeah. And so have, good. So like breaking down the acids and distributing it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets processed. Ooh, yeah. right here definitely right where you said mm -hmm. those, those are attachments trap levator scapula attaches here you know, you rotator cuff supraspinae is coming in you got a lot of high intersection right here so if I'm not fully relaxed can that prohibit you from getting all the spots not really <laughs> not really I mean we are like a dancing partners I mean yeah it Maybe very minorly, but not really. I can, I can work through most of it. There's two reasons why muscles won't relax. One, there's either you know posture, which is taken out of the equation by laying down, and then you have guarding. So it's not you, an area that's being guarded can only be not guarded when your body doesn't feel the need to guard it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like it's protection, <clears throat> it's subconscious. It's not a Relax your back, David. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It's it's when the body feels the need doesn't feel the need to protect it anymore. The guarding will go away. So if you feel a big hump on top. Well, there's just there's this tightness. I don't think there's. A, I wouldn't call this even a hump. I I would just call this. I was going to say is that just like muscle. Just just when you say you're you're an athlete. You know, if you're going to be an athlete, you're going to have. We want to say some exhaust buildup in the muscles that needs to be cleaned out. Now you've done a pretty good job of, you know, stretching your back and rolling and stuff like that to keep it from accumulating too much. But you know, I tell my athlete, I mean, you know, my athletes that come in, I, you know, they, they're coming in a couple times a week. So the fact that you've done this well with, you know, minimal care, I'd say it's pretty. It's a testament to being young, one, and <laughs> two that you're also participating. But um, yes, as you age, you'll need. You know, more car mechanics. If you're going to go off-roading, you have to take your car to the mechanic more often than the person that drives on smooth roads. It's a, mm -hmm. it's just a game of, of keeping your spine aging evenly. But yeah, I can tell this is why when you're breathing, it's probably happening right in here. This is where some right in here is where there's, feel all this? There's some kind of little, oh, yeah. some little ridges right in here. Yeah. Or right above or below this is where it's probably clicking because this is a little bound up right there. Yeah. Oh, I breathe, breathe, breathe. If I go too hard, let me know. Here we go. 
pineapples. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that your safe word? <laughs> 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 pineapples. <laughs> Posture is a distillation of whatever position you're in for the most amount of time, right? It's, all, it's nothing more complicated than that. Mm -hmm. And if a predominant amount of your time is bent forward, that's where your body will, will remain. And in order to counter stretch, we have to first make sure all the parts are moving. Otherwise, if I just put people on stretches, they'll just bend where they're loose, right? They're not going to bend <laughs> evenly. Yeah. And then they'll say, oh, I, that stretch hurt me. And it's like, well, yeah, it did. You weren't bending evenly. When I go through the spine, make sure it's all limber. I know, I feel it, I got you, but. Yeah. He asked me for new stuff, so I guess I could show him the <laughs> forearm on the occiput. My dad's been doing this move a lot, where it's a mm. kind of a flat edge, and he holds it. Mm. You know, oh my gosh, the amount of tenderness! Uh -huh. But I don't do this on my white belts because you know, they're not ready. <laughs> what color belt will I be? <laughs> <laughs> Third visit. Well, hey, it's definitely not a what do they call it? A purple belt. Oh, there you go. Uh, my favorite's like in the MMA fight, you know. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt, like that's like an accolade, like oh, but it is, it is, it's like it took years to even get like beyond the white belt, it's like seven years or something, you know, that'll work. I did Taekwondo, okay, I got my black belt in two years. <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't know that. But my, my point is that it's Taekwondo, okay? <laughs> I'm still impressed American, by that. <laughs> American Taekwondo, man, they give away belts, okay? Every three months, they'll get you whatever color belt you want. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you can pretty much buy a black belt in Taekwondo. And <laughs> they're like, it's all about like progression. Every month, you're getting a new stripe. Every three months, you get a new belt. Because Americans can't handle like having the same belt for more than three months. It's like, what was it? White, yellow, orange, green, blue, purple... Red, uh, brown, high brown, red, high red, black. You know, it was like, this is, it was like, my gosh, how many belts are there? Did you do second? Uh, yeah, no, uh, I think I was a second degree by the time I was like 12. Okay. Second degree black belt? Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> it's not very difficult. <laughs> I think once you start getting up there, though, it does take a lot. Oh, it slows down, yeah. I think for after first degree or second degree, it definitely slows Third down. Third degree, I think, is like, I think it's six years you have to wait. Right. I remember. Right. So I always joke with my dad, I call it the face smash. Because <laughs> it's like, presses people's faces down into the table. <laughs> They're like, my fa eyeballs are getting compressed. It's like a facial massage, too. Right, mm -hmm. right. Uh. Mm. Makes one reel with the lady gun. So don't you let go of my hand. I'm like, oh, God, every time I do this, Carlin, that's all I can think about. It was perfect. Mm -hmm. okay. Redirect my hand back to its spot because I can't <laughs> really feel it. <laughs> it does make your, it does, yeah, that's accurate. It makes it feel a little numb sometimes. Oh. 
What's all that? You have a whole brachial plexus on your nerves that go down your arm. It's all influenced by these muscles. Hey, it's like the nerves and arms are like a lot during the time he's doing this. Now my tickle spot. <laughs> Found it. Yeah, there's, so they, we first started, you know, when I was a kid, we had these exercises attached to the wall that would just basically give us a deeper stretch in our neck, and then they made a one that we can essentially, there's a device that goes in between your shoulder blades hmm. called a yellow dental, a yellow thoracic dental, and then you have a strap that connects to your forehead that actually pulls your head back at the same time this is being pushed in. He asked me earlier, uh, do you have anything a little more, uh, okay. <laughs> Sounds like a contraption. You just better be dang sure you got the spine ready before you put, you know, people in this stuff. You mm. know, I'm just so fair warning, right? I, mean, uh -huh. I usually spend a good three months, you know, two months with people before I introduce these things because. Yeah, well, I'll give you a preview. So why is it like extremely sensitive yeah. down there? Well, me? it's a lot of nerve endings in here anyway, right? Your sciatic nerves in here. This is a lot of stabilization muscles in the glute. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Sitting locks this joint, so anytime you have to drive a lot or sit a lot, it's going to create tension. Right, this becomes like essentially your heel. When you sit, all the weight ends, you know, right here. Yeah. And so this joint gets stiff. It's like the, you know the stone at the bottom <laughs> that isn't able to move because everything else above it's moving. things that you feel so good when you stop. Parcha. There you go. Yeah, don't, don't, Morning. Don't, don't play for me. <laughs> Looks like I woke up. <laughs> oh, yes. And then he's going to compress that way. Yeah, just 
just to actually bend your back at the same time that I'm you know, working on you. Uh, your collarbone here. I feel like. Mm. I feel like your sorry, your right clavicle. I feel like this right shoulder. Come up here, girl. I feel like the right shoulder is a little closer to midline than when I was watching you standing. Like this arm, this shoulder is closer to midline than the left shoulder. You look at me for a second, David. It feels like the one shoulder is a little bit more. That makes sense. Like this is shortened in here, mm. and the shoulder wants to. So I would be curious how. I'm working on your pec here. I feel like this shoulder needs to be stretched back, or maybe you're contracted more on your right, your right dominant. You like this? Likely, because I carry heavy objects with my right. So I'm saying this is like more contracted in. You know, the right shoulders pulled more to midline. Um, the long term would be the AC joint, even rotator cuff potentially. If we don't like relax, I got you, buddy. Yeah, just a lot of tension in here. There's a, a chromioclavicular joint in here that gets jammed. And then the rotator cuff muscles, the tendons of those muscles are held tight when the shoulder goes forward or gets jammed in. Mm -hmm. So it makes it, makes it puts you in a position where I didn't do anything and my rotator cuff got injured, kind of idea. So we want to, you know, at the same time, usually you can work on this with the roller, you just work on all these angles. You know, while you're doing your back stretching, make sure you're, that makes sense stretching your arm back too. Yeah. But I feel like you might notice the right's a little tighter. Right here, yeah, you gotta get all that. Yeah. Yeah, like right here, it's all yeah. coming out. Yeah. Just, yeah, you gotta let that stretch. I was saying to you, this, this joint seems jammed to me. You know, one way you can like slit your lay, arm like hang over the edge of the bed, mm -hmm. put a weight in your hand, let that stretch. Oh. Like take your just your right thing, just almost just your right arm at least until it balances out a little bit. Try to stretch this open here. Work them back down to their attachments, medial, lateral, epicondyles. You want to always, you, know, you don't, don't massage this way. You always, always towards the elbow. Sometimes you'll hear stuff like, always oh, rub towards the heart. I'm like, it's not that simple. It's not. <laughs> Sometimes you want to work towards the attachments. You know, so I was like, working this from here, I go this way. So from midline, this way, this way, I go this way. You know, because you want to push it back down on the attachments. That makes sense. It's not as simple as massage towards the heart. That ever comes up in the future.
Yeah, not nearly the <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is normal. <laughs> That's yeah, I felt I could feel the difference. <laughs> you don't need much work. There's not much not much clogged over here. Smooth. Mm -hmm. Smooth. And you got a bunch of knots in there. Same thing with the I don't like I said, I could just see it. Yeah, better. Better. Yeah, much better. I mean it was like you gotta work on that. I would almost not want to lengthen this one, the left one anymore, until the right one catches up. Mm -hmm. So like that exercise I said with the arm over the head, I would just do the right. I just stretch that right one. It, when you look, it makes it easy when you look at your shirt off in the mirror, just like, if you can see if you can, you know, I feel it was like, when I was looking at you earlier, it was like the one, I'm exaggerating, but I feel like the yeah. one shoulder was more in, you know, and it's in the, made the midline, you know, the midline and the shoulder distance was, you're feeling this right shoulder. How much of a weight do you suggest? I Not much, five, five pounds. Just something to help you leverage. Even, oh, just the weight, even just the weight of your arm is enough, but if you want to add a little extra stretch, <clears throat> a little weight in your hand. For how long <clears throat> should I hold um, it there? A couple minutes, not long. It's not like a ligament stretch, like a, you're mainly stretching the muscles, mm -hmm. right? You need a little bit of ligament stretches too, but if your hands go nonstop, <laughs> you know, but just work on, you know, even sometimes I'm around like a wall and just, you know, throughout my day, just stretching the shoulder back, even if you don't have the ability to lay down, you just, throughout your work, if you have a five minutes or two minutes, just, stretch that shoulder back a little bit. Mm -hmm. you know, no one really cares until the labrum gets torn or rotator cuff gets torn, but you know, that the alignment makes injuries happen easily. So mm -hmm. if we can, you know, address the alignment then you're not gonna have an injury. Yeah. So makes sense. Pe people are set up with these things. Here we go. Oh. Yeah. Let's put this on your hip thing, let's check these. Put that like that. There you go. All right. Press back with my elbow. Press that's new. <laughs> okay, hey, oh, yeah, new tricks, okay. Yeah. Here we go. All right, now press back. There you go. Woo hoo hoo. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Right. Okay, good. <laughs> Mike can be Uncle Ben. No! Pressing the head back, mm -hmm. so it's almost you know, a little bit like almost like you're doing the neck down, but something's pushing on your forehead. That's flattering. <laughs> Can you see on my nose? <laughs> up my nose. So just make it a little bit upright, a little, a little too high, a little lower. So you want to have it kind of right between your shoulder blades. You can start with just the yellow guy. You don't have to do the neck strap. You start with the yellow guy, compress in between your shoulder blades. And I probably do this about a month before I can bring in the bungee strap. Okay. So you have the yellow guy that's a thin version of the lumbar guy that can fit in between your shoulder blades. Mm -hmm. Right? So the problem with the roller is that the roller contacts your shoulder blades and doesn't give you pressure in the middle, right? Uh, yeah. So you gotta get something thin enough. Well a cross ball doesn't do it. <laughs> you know, but something thin enough that goes between your shoulder blades. You make your contact and you get a little bit of a downward slide, right? So we call that a tissue pull. It feels so good. Yeah, you feel things expand and yeah. Up. Now what you try to do is you try to push with your feet and get a little bit of a downward like that. Just oh, like that. Yeah, get yeah. that. Feel that tissue pull? Mm -hmm. Right? So you want to have that downward pull on the skin. Yeah, they're all expanding. <laughs> if it's too intense, I would rather you reduce the depth of the neck. Do you understand? You just take it off, you take, reduce the depth a little bit so you can, you know, manage the time. 
right? And like I said, I, would, I wouldn't even have these white blocks underneath it. We would just start with the yellow guy, do that for 20 times for 20 minutes, get that under your belt, then we move it up and, and, and make it taller. The only thing I really saw on your back was a little bit that, that clicking you said to me earlier, and then it's a little bit because your work's forwardly rotating that shoulder, your right shoulder's a little more close to midline, and so I would be, you know, uh, you know try to have your girlfriend or uh, somebody pull on this arm a little bit. You're trying to stretch. I see toys. <laughs> I heard you got more toys. I got lots of toys. <laughs> You're not ready. You're not <laughs> But you understand? Okay. Use this to stretch your head back. This is like a home kit. <laughs> a home kit. You know, but, you know, you just, you know, I wouldn't be, this is like six months into care. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. They're intense stretches. So the, the yeah. Denerol, the Denerol was the first tool that we found that allowed a lay person to have something at home. You understand? It was like, this, this is approachable for beginners. For, I grew up with this stuff. <laughs> yeah. so does that hurt you like at all? No. no, you don't feel anything. No tension or nothing. No. No. It shouldn't. My point is that because the neck should. That's why it's easy. Do you understand? It's only if there's resistance is there pain. Um, but again, I've been just since I was baby. You know, I mean, this is. It's like being a gymnast your whole life. The way your neck moves looks unhuman to me. <laughs> <laughs>